Okay, folks, welcome back to Water Child Tarot, and this is part three of our tour of Japanese tarot decks. My name is Sarah, and thank you for joining me on this little adventure uh, through my purchases that I made on Japanese auction sites over the summer and early fall. Um, we are continuing with decks from the 1990s, and I have just a few more to show you. Um, we're going to start with these two decks. These are well known uh, because the artists are well known for other artworks that they produce. So they're not necessarily primarily known for their tarot. They're known for other things, including um, anime and video games and, and that kind of thing. Um, so th I'm going to start um, with this one, and I have to not get these confused, um, and this one. Uh, this is called the Shiwazi o Tsukamu Uranai, Finding Happiness with Tarot Fortune Telling, or I've also seen it um, translated as the Grab Happiness Tarot. Um, the original publication date I'm not 100% sure of. This one's published 91. I had written down 1996 because I saw a deck published then. And I think it's been reissued a little bit later as well. So if you know the original publication uh, date for this deck, please let me know in the comments. Um, it has been issued in several different um, types of packaging featuring different specific cards on the front. So you'll see this advertised with, I think, the Empress on the front, um, as well as a couple of other of the uh, characters. Now, the artist is um, very famous in Japan, very well known in Japan, and possibly among uh, those of us in the US and Europe um, who are interested in the Final Fantasy um, video game series. It's Yoshitaka Amano is the artist, and he's um, most well known, especially for Final Fantasy X as doing character designs for that. So if you're familiar with the Final Fantasy series, um, this artwork might look familiar because it's the same artist. Um, Naru, Naru Mido Shupan or Saibido Shupan are the publisher. And Emil Scheherazade is credited as the book author. And I'm sure that I'm sure that Emil Scheherazade, uh, just like Alexandria Jupiter King, is sort of a, a tarot stage name, if you will, or tarot pen name. Inside the box, we have the typical booklet as well as the wallet that holds the cards. And this is the rest of the box inside here, just so you can see. Yeah, if you read Japanese, let me know. I did try translating um, some of the packaging on some of these decks where I didn't have a lot of information, but it, it comes out very garbled um, using an automatic translator. So it doesn't always make a lot of sense. Um, I will say that Casper, the boy diviner, um, has a full walkthrough of this deck on his channel. So I'm not going to do one um, here, but you can check out Casper's video and I will link to that down below. It comes in a split box. And get some of the cards out. And it does come with two blank cards here. And we'll just kind of look at a few of these while I give you, uh, do I have any other information? Not really. Um, yeah, but we can just look at a few. I like this devil a lot. So it's interesting. It's the, the uh, art style to my eye, it sort of looks precisely messy, um, if that makes any sense. Like it's very fine detail. So it's not fine detail, but it's, I mean, it's very fine detailed, but it's sort of squiggly, you know, it's very, um, it has ab abstractness. You can feel energy in the artist's uh, strokes of their pen, etc. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's very, very detailed, as you can probably see. And I like it. It's also very 80s. Um, a lot of the you know, yeah, 
like the black, white, and red combo, um, the different uh, sort of shapes and things just remind me of like 80s zebra fabrics were really popular um, in terms of home decor and stuff. So, and this one reminds me of an H.R. Geiger um, kind of thing. If you know the, the artist who designed the alien uh, the alien in the aliens movies he does a lot with sort of biometric machines um, with tentacles and things like that so anyway this is a really cool hierophant card we've got the figure here inside of his mouth which is also keyhole shaped which is also his face it's just, just there's the, there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot to unpack with that one so and you can see that the pips are pretty plain um, so this may not be your cup of tea to read with but I think the cards are beautiful and I really appreciate this artist. So that is the Grab Happiness Tarot, AKA the Tarot of Yoshitako Amano. Next up we have this deck, which is known as the Moon Princess Himiko Tarot, uh, Aito Shinpi no Taroto Uranai, um, or Divinatory Tarot of Love and Mastery, or Love and Mystery Fortune Telling Tarot, depending on how you're going to translate this. So, again, pardon me for not um, having a fantastic uh, grasp of Japanese uh, language and pronunciation, um, but there it is. This is published in 1993, so a little bit later than um, the Yoshitaka Amano. Um, Ayumi Kasai is known as a well-known graphic artist uh, with many art books and magazines um, to her credit and so she's also you know known for other things in Japan probably more well known for her magazine uh, and her other art than she is for her tarot but she has designed this tarot deck so and again we see butterflies featuring heavily um, they're on the backs of these cards. Here's our booklet that comes with it. And you can see from the booklet that we're dealing with another pip deck. And the reason this deck is known as the Moon Princess Himiko Tarot is that Moon Princess Himiko is the attributed author of this, uh, this booklet. So as we've seen in other um, texts, um, we have, you know, sort of a tarot pen name uh, of sorts for this author. The other thing that I'll say about this one um, is that there are many decks called Moon Princess Tarot, so you can do a search for that, but you have to look uh, closely to make sure you have this particular one based on packaging and artwork. Um, and, uh, and yeah, um, my buddy Lisa MCW um, has a detailed comparison of the uh the Yoshitako Amano and the Ayumi Kasai decks so if you're interested you can go see those side by side um they do look like they're published in the same in the same way so they both have this blank card they're the same size they have the same kind of glossy card stock so um you know they, they have some similarities in the way that they were produced and so from Adam McLean's website, I have um, this, this quote, um, which is that her full card incorporates the well-known Komote mask and her magician references Unraku puppets. So, you know, basically what he's saying here is that she draws on traditional Japanese artwork, um, symbols, and cultural uh, events to, to incorporate into her presentations here. Again, very vividly colored. This one, she's a little more, um, it's still got a lot of detail, but it's got a little bit more sort of, less of that like squiggly frayed line work. Um, at first these, uh, so here's this full card we're talking about with this traditional mask. So at first, this kind of struck me, you know, because the production is so similar to the um, the Yoshitaka Amano deck, 
Um, they struck me as kind of similar, and I was wondering whether I wanted to get both, but actually if you look at the cards, the art style is very different, um, and the, the imagery is very different, you know, what she chose to put in the decks. I do like her wands. I wish these pip cards were a little bit more decorated with maybe with flowers or leaves or scenery, um, but I like her, her wands and her swords, you know, these are really cool looking. So, yeah. So again, Ayumi Kasai is the artist. And if you want a detailed uh, walkthrough in comparison, head over to Lisa's channel and I will link her video uh, in the description box below. Now, as we've been going through this um, series of Japanese tarot, you've probably been wondering, where are the Japanese tarot? Uh, where are the manga tarot? And um, while some of these artists do also draw manga and anime, um, when, when we look at Japanese uh, pop art these days, we probably think of a style that's more like this. And so I'm happy to share with you this is the pocketable tarot, and um, it's just known as that because it's part of this series of miniature games. And so here it comes like this. This is the outer box. Inside this outer box, you have this funky wallet situation. This reminds me of um, calculator wallets. And then inside here you have this tray which slides out and then it's meant to hold four piles of cards. Now 78 is not divisible by four evenly so then you get extra cards that kind of float around in here and could easily get bent or stick out in a weird way when you slide that back in. Not great packaging guys. I know you thought you were being clever um, but it's not awesome but that's okay. Here's the little booklet that comes with it. And it does have uh, meanings and full color pictures for all of the cards. So that's cool. Uh, they definitely put some effort in. And as you can see, it's teeny tiny. Um, so I don't normally like to hold cards up because I'm always worried that I'm going to be sort of waving them around in front of the camera, but I will do my best. It is this tiny little size. So, and this is more of that classic anime style artwork. Um, this is published in 1997. It's also known as Pocketable Series Number 102. And the publisher is SYU Creation. I don't have any uh, notes on the artist, so I'm not sure who drew these. Um, SYU Creation is a toy company. So again, we're looking at that kind of fad that started in the U.S. in the 70s with places like the Hoi Polloi Tarot, Dynamic Games, um, putting out tarots as toys or games to be played among groups of friends. And this kind of carries on that tradition. And this one's inspired by the Hanson Roberts Tarot. That's something that the Encyclopedia of Tarot points out. I'm not sure I would have picked up on that because I don't have a copy of the Hanson Roberts. But if you do, or you want to look up images on the web, you can kind of see that. Um, I'm accidentally going in order here, and I don't mean to, but yeah. And the Hanson Roberts, of course, is also um, picking up on RWS imagery. So it's, again, it's kind of a, a tribute to a tribute. But it's cute. I like the colors. I like the anime style. Um, and I like that the, the cards aren't numbered, and they're not um, labeled in any way. So if you want to play around with reordering the Major Arcana, for example, you can do that here. You can also just kind of try and quiz yourself on who these people are and see if you can sort of figure it out. So if you would like a full walkthrough of this deck, let me know. I'll be happy to do one. But yeah, that's the death card, of course. So yeah, that's the pocketable tarot. It is certainly pocketable. It's teensy-weensy. Um, and there are the backs there. So that's the last deck that I received that was fully opened when I got it. Um, and I wanted to save a little surprise for us to do together. So, drum roll please. 
uh, this is what we're going to look at. This is called the Windmill Tarot Deluxe Edition, 78 cards. And um, this was one that I kind of been on on a whim. Um, there weren't many photos because, um, you know, this deck is still sealed. But what I can tell you, and what's printed on the back here, is that this deck was published in 1992 by Nihon Kar Karuta. Um, and the artist is attributed as N. Kuroda. So, um, and I think I got that off of Adam's website. So yeah, I'd never heard of this before. Um, I did look up images on the website, on the internet, and I saw that this, um, did have one or two images that seemed, you know, interesting. I mean, it's an RWS clone again, but they seemed interesting. So I went ahead and picked it up because it was available for not very much money. So let's dive in. This is exciting. So yeah, our nearly 20 year old deck. Uh, it's a little smushed there, but I can tell that that's just because of the way the um, cards are packaged inside. I can feel that it's very heavy on this side and not on the over here. So we open this up. Oh, it's like a little flip top box too. I can't even take the top off, that's cool. So it says windmill tarot textbook, okay. Don't know what this says. That says tarot. I recognize those four. Standard little booklet. Ooh, that's interesting. 50 card spread. Look at the cards. So we have two packs. They're not even. Uh, here are the backs. Let's slip this plastic off. Cool. Brightly colored. Just totally my jam. Let's see what order we have here. We have the magician, narrow, narrow, and the two, the three. Swords, pentacles, some more majors back here. All right, I'm going to pause this and get these into some kind of order so that we can go through them in a way that makes sense. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back and we're a little more organized. So yeah, interesting. It is definitely a Rider Waite clone, but there's some few differences that I picked up on and I tried not to look at the cards too closely so I can be surprised along with you all. Um, but here they are. So there's that booklet and here's our start with our full card. Um, it comes with a bunch of extra cards. So there's two of these blank, uh, these blank cards here. And then there are not one, not two, not three, but four title cards. And they're all identical. So here we have illustrated by In Kuroda under the dire direction of, oh, here you go, Alexandria Mokusheo. So another Alexandria Jupiter King production, published by Nihon Karuta, 1992. So that's what we saw on the outside. So very cool. Um, Alexandria Jupiter King strikes again and super neat. Okay, we're gonna go through these and I'm just gonna flip through. If I notice anything really amazing, I'll point it out, but you know, it's basically an RWS clone again, uh, which is cool. I'm okay with that. So here we go. I may point out things that strike my eye, but let me know what strikes your eye. Um, I saw a few things when I was flipping through these just to get them in order, but I try not to look too closely so that we could all be surprised. And 
and all the symbols are here, but certainly the arrangement of the characters and their poses and things uh, are different, at least in these majors they are. So that's cool. I'm down with that. I love that he has a tulip shaped scepter. I've talked about this in some of these uh, Swiss tarot decks that I've um, done examinations of here on the channel. So, you know, anything that, that kind of calls back to tarot history is pretty cool. Here we have another Hierophant within a Hierophant, um, which we saw on our, um, our Yoshitaka Amano tarot. So that's neat. I like the use of pink. That's a very common color. Yeah, I'm digging the scenes and the skies. Um, I'll talk about this more in a future video, but one of the things I was noticing, because Pamela Coleman Smith had to do her original artwork um, in such a, a hurried way, she had six months to paint 78 paintings, and as she went, she kind of simplified and simplified, especially her scenery. So when you take the characters out of some of those cards, you're not left with very much, but here you've got all kinds of stuff going on. Um, and I can't tell if this is grass or a desert. But, you know, you've got leaves, you've got clouds, mountains, rocks, you know, all kinds of details in the background. Here's the star card. It's also the card that's featured on the front of the box. Interesting moon with this um, very uh, Arab influenced type of architecture. So here's one of the cards that stuck out to me as being very different from the RWS. You have this uh, man's head and woman's head. This is a very awkward composition. It looks like they're coming out of a single neck. Um, it's pretty weird, but yeah, with the sun above. So It's one of the happiest judgment cards I think I've ever seen in my life. have rods instead of wands. So Morgan Greer uses rods, right? So yeah, again, we have a shift in perspective. The JK Waite does this as well, where you see some cards just from a different angle. Ooh, nice ombre in the sky here. I like this fade. Again, even when there's not a lot of stuff in the background, the backgrounds are nice. It seems like the minors here are more RWS than the majors were. We'll see if any of them are much different. Page, Knight, Queen. It's almost exactly the same. It has a little bit more of an anime feel. And King. Pointing the other way. But yeah, same card basically. Okay. Here's our cups. You 
see the guy's face in this one. We can't see it in the original. So maybe it's this one, the Uranai and the JK Wait together. What do we think, kids? Do we have a showdown? A clone off? <laughs> I'm not looking very happy there, am I? I'm kind of sad. Oh, Mr. Fish, I have a lot of feelings and a lot of problems. Mm. I prefer an introspective page to a depressed one. Queen of Cups is interesting. It's different. This is very JK weight. But hey, you know, it's Alexander Jupiter King ripping himself off. So <laughs> I guess that makes it okay, right? So funny. So funny. This is excellent card stock, by the way. A lot of the decks we've looked at through this series had really terrible card stock. It was very cardboardy. It would, you know, crease very easily. Um, it would be hard to keep it nice. This is a modern plasticized uh, type of card stock. Nice durable finish on it. Still nice and flexible, but not cheesy in any way. So yeah, appreciate that. Well, folks, there you have it, the Windmill Tarot. Thank you again for joining me uh, on this series. What did you think? Um, have you watched all three videos? Which, vi uh, which decks did you like the best? Which ones do you have? Which ones are you going to be on the lookout for if you collect decks? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I'll be back next time with more tarot. Until then, be well, and thanks again.